I'll make a motion to come out of executive session. No, second. Second. Got a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed. Uh, the work session, discussion items. Uh, first be the big trash splash donations. Uh, let me kind of explain this. Back about a year ago, we um, decided to get up folks to try to clean the park up in different areas. Uh, and people donated uh, to this uh, event that we had. So we collected the money. Actually, nobody showed up but me and Mr. Venable and Miss Lewis and Mr. Rich. I think we went in. Was it us three? No, uh, a little bit, very little participation. Yeah, very little participation. Anyway, but we did. We did get some money from it, and we never did uh, make a decision on where those donations should go. No, so we made the decision. It just never got dispersed. Right. Oh, it, we never. So we never actually give them the money. No, we never approved it in a meeting. It never got. Never well, approved. We need to, it never. The checks never got written. Well, I right. just assumed it was right. done been took care of. Right. So. Okay. I, I know that the decision had been made to give half of it to the Jackson County Rescue right. Squad yeah. and half of it to the Jackson County Shriners. Jackson County Shriners. Right. Uh, so what I'm asking this body to do is, if that's good with everybody, we'll put it on the next meeting yes. to approve, and then we'll we'll go ahead and disperse those funds, Mr. Manning. Yeah, we, I mean, yeah, we've told them, we talked to them about that over a year ago. Yes, yeah. sir, that needs to be took care of. Right, and then we found it. Uh, I think everybody letting it operate on it. We found it when Mr. Manning found it. What during the audit or yeah, while you were doing doing with financial statement. Okay. So, if everybody's good with that, we'll put that on the next meeting. Next be dump trucks and road tractors. Mr. Campbell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Commissioner. So, I'll be working from a uh, package that looks like this truck on. And I will just work through the top page down. Uh, so it's, it's the time of year where we start looking at making decisions on purchasing uh, for our large truck, our dump truck rotation program. It's an annual program, and just as a reminder, last year we did some changing out. Um, so there are three medium duties now versus four, and then we up the heavy duties to four versus three in hopes that the returns we're seeing on the heavy duties would help cancel out that expected depreciation on the medium duty trucks. Okay, so we increased one on the heavy duties decrease the medium and then the road tractor has pretty much held its own in years past so um i come to you with two different brands per each now these are these are mostly from acca bid options as well as source well. so the road tractor and the heavy duties are all acca provided options and then the others are source well uh, so I'll start first with the road tractor, the 2021 Peterbilt 389 versus a 2021 Kenworth W900L. And you can see the prices for each brand. Which, that, which excuse me, John, which, uh, which brand has the better resale value, the top one or the bottom one? It really all depends. You know, last year we went with the Peterbilt. Mm -hmm. um, the, year, the year prior we went with the Kenworth. Um, it really just depends on that auction day. I mean, it's yeah. it's a toss up. And it's this, a preference for Chevy debate, right. I think. According but, to this, it's basically flip flop from last year. I mean, the numbers are about the same, just the other way. Yeah, uh, the the Peterbilt, I believe, was a little a little bit cheaper last year right. on the road tractor, um, but not so much on the dump. Right. So, you know, like we've talked about in the past, maybe one thing that just one little distinction that sets us apart on auction day, you know, maybe the maybe the benefit and the deciding factor, but probably more than anything are the markets and stability, which there is a lot of uncertainty now given given the times we're in on on the markets as well as availability on some of these things, you know, from time of purchase to time that we would take delivery. But I come to you with this now in hopes of being ready for a March auction. We won't know honestly until uh, until you all decide on the brand, 
on which direction we go and, and those conversations on how they lead on availability and how that's going to shake out to a position for a March auction. If not, uh, we'll, we'll look to June. So the second sheet uh, is the 2021 P567 versus the 2021 KWT880. You can see how those prices compare. Bed. Does it have a demo tailgate on it? Yes, sir, with a high lifter. Okay. And an option we added last year was the vibrators. Mm -hmm. It was recommended by the auction folks to add that. Okay. For the for the price, you know, it's a, it's a small addition that pays. It's supposed to pay dividends at auction day. Lastly, are the medium duties 2021 Peterbilt 348 versus a 2021 KWT 370. I can say that um, this is probably third hand at best, but the cab is testing the waters on the Peterbilt heavy duties. It was discussed pretty heavily last year, as you all probably recall, and we, we went Kenworth with the heavies, Peterbilt with the road tractor, right. um, and then Kenworth with the medium duty. So I think they bought three or four, and they're going to probably be one of the first ones to the auction with the Peterbilt. Did you I have some preliminary numbers on our current inventory um, because of they were, they were pushing for us to make a decision. I brought this first, but I can I can come with that next time if you'd like to see that. Um, you know, How's it looking? They took it on the chin. You know, if, if you think back back up to March, so you know we were in the height of craziness, uncertainty. You know, it's prior uh, prior to the election and everything else. So. Uh, particularly in the medium duty sector, we had a guarantee in the 90s and they sold for 75. So, you know, that guarantee is our insurance policy. Um, so they, yeah, I don't, I wouldn't look for, I wouldn't look for, uh, you know, large, large guarantees to where we're going to clear and sell out of this unscathed. I mean, it's. I'm asking because last year was the first time that they ever had to pay. You know, the reality is it costs it costs something to run equipment every year. I mean, period. So, you know, the fact that we can run the heavy duties and sometimes even make money, you know, that's that's an anomaly in reality. So if we can if we can do it with a reasonable amount of depreciation, avoid the liability, avoid the maintenance, right. pay under warranty, sell under warranty, I, I mean I can't I can't advise you to change course, you know, in my opinion. Uh, Jonathan, is, is this price that you've listed here? Is this is this the purchase price, or is that the approximate price at this time? Uh, yes, sir. It should be the purchase price. Okay. So for me, I mean, if it's a if it's a Chevy Ford comparison here, then I'm, I'm, I think the, the lower price would be the would be the choice. I mean, that's a whether you want a blue tag or a red tag. I mean, it really doesn't matter. If it's the same contents. Then, Okay. Okay, You're looking at about twelve thousand dollar savings for the three. And uh, in all fairness, there are other brands on that CCA. So Volvo was there, and Mac is there. You know, we were Mac for a long time with heavy duties and advised to look at KW. We've been KW for a few years now, but Volvo's in, in into the races also. Uh, we really look to the auction guys to advise us on, you know, which route to take. And you know, I, I don't think there's any any wrong decision here, but I think it's a good point uh, that you make about one is there, there's a distinct difference in price there, a, a little and over the addition of three or four it makes a difference. All right, any other questions? In the meantime, between now and then, uh, if you have any questions about the, the rotation program or these trucks in particular specs, anything like that, please reach out and let's talk. Um, okay. All right, so 
Is everybody comfortable with this being on the next meeting? For approval? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, we'll move that to the next meeting. Yeah. Next be roadway striping and marking request. Mr. Campbell. So I'll be looking, looking at this sheet here, uh, and it's it's a compilation that engineering folks keep for us, and they compile and requests come in, and they have a chance to look at the road. Uh, as you'll see, it's noted a lot of these are citizen requests. There's a mayor request in there, and I recognize some of these as, uh, I think, words that were passed through you guys. Um, Sometimes passed on to add to the striping list. So it's center line striping and pavement markers on certain sections. And so we um, we bring this list to you for approval before we can do the work. I know our office has got several complaints uh, on some roads where the striping is not there or looks real weak. Especially in some of the higher elevations where the fog gets bad. County Road 33 comes to mind. I've had numerous numerous calls on 33. All right, so Jonathan, this is this is your list, your recommendation, or is this just the yes, the, the we, list of requests? Yes, we we uh, have compiled this and we're good with this list. Okay. <coughs> Everybody good with it being on the next meeting also? Mm -hmm. All right. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Campbell. Next, we'll move on to reports from staff. Mr. Manny? Oh, Thank you. Mr. Campbell, do you have any further? Any, any further? Last thing, no problem. So, looking at this picture, I just want to give you, an up, you all an update on County Road 17. Uh, the first photo, you can see the low transfer platform being constructed. So in, in the background, it's been constructed from that way, progressing to the foreground. And there's a large rock outcropping that they're working around. Uh, you can see where the drains are being transferred through the layers and then will uh, discharge on the outlet side. And you can see the layers coming up. In a later picture, we'll, we'll go into the detail of that. But this platform sets atop the grouted columns, okay? So if you picture the four by four grid of grouted columns that are 20 foot deep below this, this is kind of like the bridge deck that sets on top of that and is gonna transfer that load. So once this platform is completed and it doesn't like much more, uh, then it, it, will, it will basically squeeze down to just a 10 foot UCS wall built in the same manner. And then the interior portion will go to road fill, so a road base fill. So they're gonna work around this rock outcrop and bring it up the same fashion. And then that inner layer will go to uh, soil with the aggregate wall on the outside. The next photo is kind of a close up of the way that that's constructed. And it's fairly, it's fairly tedious and complex to be Egyptian style construction. So if there's a lot of manual labor involved on setting these wire baskets. That's an L basket and you know, that one leg is hidden there's some struts uh, interwoven into that that go from leg to leg. And you can see some hardware cloth that basically reinforces the fabric just to hold the aggregate. So this wall is superficial, okay? The layers, which are two layers per list, the whole field holds itself. The, the face is just to keep the stone from sewing off the We're building this in-house. This is county, county forces, uh, doing all this work and a lot of it's able to be done by equipment but there's a lot of hand work yes. a lot of tedious work that goes along with this they're taking their time they're doing a great job and i'm i'm very proud of the job they're doing it's looking great any questions about 17. looks good thank you all looks really good. thank you uh mr porter all right everything thank you mr Wells. Rocky. Real quickly, I, I missed the swearing-in ceremony, so I want to welcome our two new faces up there, uh, Mr. McBride and Mr. Buckner. Yes, sir. Thank you for your service. And uh, notice Mr. 
Venables change spots, and I, I'll ask him why after it's over with. <laughs> Just a quick update. We're, uh, we are full uh, at the Sheriff's Office as far as employees, the jail, however, we're too short. Had one resignation, uh, actually two resignations very um, in the last past couple of weeks. Um, so we're too short, and you're probably already aware we're staying way over normal capacity and maximum capacity of 208. We've been up so upwards of 250. For the last month or so, we have gotten it down in the 220s now, uh, which causes even more issues for us over there since um, we're short on manpower anyway. Barely got enough people to make make things happen, and so with the increased capacity, it's making it more difficult over there. Part of the problem is that the Department of uh, Corrections, State Department of Corrections, um, is trying to keep COVID out of their jail. Well, we'll be we'll, we're trying to keep it out of ours too. They will not take any. We've gone through legislators, um, contacted the director. Uh, they assure us they're trying to do something, but they had a batch of folks that came in recently that actually had COVID, so they're on a 14-day quarantine at their intake center, and so we got put on hold again. Um, if there's anything you can do to help us out on that, we would certainly appreciate it. Um, we're just way over capacity. Last time I remember being that way was back in the probably in the 90s when the federal prisoners were here. And okay. County to get paid about fifty dollars a day to keep. It. We're not getting paid that right now. So you could have personnel when you're getting paid to do it. Right now we're doing it basically for free. Um, I done, you know, I, as you know, I called you when I done a little bit of investigating on what the prisons cost. And if my memory serves me right, it cost Alabama about sixty-eight fifty per day per inmate to house an inmate. Um, so at $45 would be a huge savings when you think about the hundreds of thousands of inmates that's in state prison. If we could get a commitment from our legislators and from the governor to pay us that $45 or $50 to house them, then we could go out and hire more COs. We could build on our jail and do things like that. But until we get a commitment from Montgomery, because right now, we know we're housing them, but are they going to build a new prison somewhere and then take them all away? So um, I really hope that that our governor thinks about that. I have actually called, talked to uh, some of her staff and suggested that instead of spending billions of dollars building new prisons, invest in the 67 counties that, that you already have. It would help us, it would help the state, we get to where we need to be. To me, it's a no-brainer, and I can't understand why we're not doing it unless there's more to the that meets the eye. But I understand your frustration, and I, I, we really do. Uh, and if we could come up with something, we sure would. Uh, Ross, you have anything? No, sir. All right. Next will be comments from our commission, uh, District Four, Mr. McBride. Yes, I just want to say thank you to all our county employees for the hard work that you put in here, and, and thank you to the commission here for uh, helping me to, to learn the ropes and, and get off to a good start. I'm enjoying things, and y'all be safe, and remember to social distance, and have a great Thanksgiving. Mr. Butler. Uh, yeah, it's a wonderful time of year. I'm very, very thankful to be part of this, thankful to live uh, in Jackson County and in the great state of Alabama. I strongly encourage everybody to celebrate Thanksgiving, be with your be with your family however you can, and uh, uh, let's let's uh, bring some love back to this world. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bell. I'd just like to echo what the other two commissioners said. Uh, you know, it's been a tough year. A lot of stuff's happened, you know, nationally, locally, everything. Just, uh, just be thankful that, uh, you know, we, we live in the community we do and, and have a, a savior that we have to lean on. Amen. And, uh, happy Thanksgiving. I just want to echo what the other three said. Uh, it's the time that we ever we celebrate thanks. We need to do that every day, 365 days a year. Because you go to some of these third world countries and see what they have to put up with on day in day out basis, and we think we've got it, brother. Just be thankful that we're not in those situations, and we're we're a whole lot more fortunate than others. Just everybody have a great. Thanksgiving and remember 
watched the ball games this weekend. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I would like to wish all our employees a, a happy Thanksgiving. I uh, really want to thank our county employees uh, that stuck it out with the county uh, for all this time. We, we really do appreciate you. Uh, I don't think we say it enough how much we appreciate our employees, but we really do appreciate every, each and every one of you. Uh, our commission staff has done a great job through this pandemic. I want to thank them. And, and like I said, just wish everybody happy Thanksgiving. Be safe. Uh, just don't come back with COVID. <laughs> and with that, I'll entertain a motion to uh, I'll make a motion. Second. I got a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye.